When you want to understand the world, you never start from scratch. As a child, you learn the language from your parents. Then you learn to read and write. Uh, you acquire uh, the tools that have been developed and evolved and experimented with and improved generation after generation in order to be efficient and effective in your ability to distinguish fact from fiction, to compare reality with the results of your experiments. And the ability that we all have to share the tools that we use in order to understand the world is what constitutes our civilization. In this past year, we have learned how important it is to be resilient. And the tools that we can apply in order to build the skills that improve our resilience, that improve our adaptability, that improve the probability of being able to cope with the various uh, conditions and the situations that surround us. This ability is both very practical, almost mechanical, but it is also, of course, psychological, emotional. Uh, in a 360 degree evaluation of uh, whether we are fit in a particular situation, we cannot concentrate only on just one aspect and not on the other. They complement each other both as individuals as well as the communities that we form. So the beauty of uh, the world today is that indeed we have the uh, basis to make sure that as many people as possible can um, leverage the, the opportunity of improving their adaptability, their resilience, uh, and to stay fit in a complex world. These tools, uh, of course, are those uh, traditional, whether they are books or television, but they are in an even increasing rate. More modern tools that allow many-to-many -many communications over the internet, ways to learn to teach, to learn to teach in a cycle where uh, knowledge and understanding are immediately available. Now, the architecture of these tools matters as well. Because, yes, uh, there is a lot that we can gain from uh, the efficiency of uh, centralized distribution and uh, the ability of uh, intermediaries in aggregating, uh, ranking, uh, filtrating and presenting uh, the uh, sources uh, of information and understanding is very attractive. But we don't have to stop there. We cannot uh, become lazy because of the ease of uh, these platforms and the immediate availability of uh, the tools and the information. Just a few days ago, uh, there have been a scary handful of hours where in very large part of the world, uh, all uh, the various platforms provided by Google became unavailable. Whether it was Gmail for sending and receiving email messages, or it was YouTube uh, for uh, uploading or watching videos, and many, many others. And we have realized how strongly we are relying on those platforms and tools, 
and their unavailability can cripple our ability to be resilient, to adapt and to be fit in a complex situation. So we must uh, keep evolving our tools, especially peer-to-peer -peer distributed and decentralized platforms are a must. We cannot afford to put our individual and social survival at risk by relying on an excessive degree on the centralized tools, regardless of how rich they are, regardless of how uh, their features correspond to our needs, regardless of how uh, they have uh, provided us a stepping stone towards a deeper understanding of the world. It is one of the reasons why it is so irresponsible to pretend that peer-to-peer -to -peer tools are equivalent to infringing or even criminal purposes. Uh, it is uh, ridiculous to paint with a wide brush and uh, just pull every possible use together, completely excluding fundamental, legal, and even vital uses that do not rely on the sanctioned, uh, permitted, compliant, regulated platforms uh, that uh, have every interest of slowing down the evolution of the alternatives. So, you owe it to yourself in order to proceed in your learning, in your ability to cope, in your becoming more and more resilient, in order to make sure that the path on which you have started is not stymied by inferior centralized technology to both learn, teach, adopt, and practice what these tools allow. And the next several episodes of the context will be dedicated in, uh, at some degree or other, to the power of decentralized peer-to-peer -peer technologies, such as BitTorrent, such as Pirate Bay, which is an interface to BitTorrent, such as 3D printing and digital manufacturing, blockchain and Bitcoin, and the applications of decentralized payment mechanisms and decentralized finance. Each of these have been labeled to be either borderline criminal or explicitly criminal in various phases by various incumbent interests, often successfully. I am recording this in Italy, for example, where not only uh, network neutrality is non-existent, but the Italian internet is heavily censored. You cannot access Pirate Bay under the assumption that every use of Pirate Bay is uh, unlawful. Well, surprise, I published a book and copies of this book are available on quotation marks, pirate websites, available via BitTorrent, and I am proud of that. I can assure you, I am losing no copies in sales of my book because of the availability on those platforms. If anything, uh, as Cory Doctorov says, the biggest menace against me is obscurity. 
not piracy. So I want to encourage you and I will keep illustrating what are the tools that when push comes to shove and the pressure of a complex world increases will show to be tools that are more reliable than the centralized one that make us lazy. I hope that you will follow me in this journey. And if you want to understand at depth what are the mechanisms that technology in our complex world uh, is leveraging, but also expressing in paradigms that can be understood, adopted, and which can drive your decisions. I invite you to become a subscriber of the Jolting Technologies courses. Go to jolting.co and sign up to um, enjoy both pre-recorded videos as well as live sessions where we go in depth answering the questions that you ask, having conversations about the implications. And the jolting technologies that are based on an understanding of an increasing rate of acceleration in the world around us are going to be, as a matter of fact, already are the driving force of the transformations that we see around us in the 21st century. We are now entering the third decade of the 21st century. It is time that we step up to the challenges as powerfully, but also in a sure-footed manner that we can claim the possibility, the ability, the desire to reach our full potential. There are huge challenges that we have to address and we have the skills, the talent and the tools that we need in order to address and to solve them. Thank you and good luck.